Hi, my name is Sham, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Active Standby Failover on a Cisco ASA firewall. This is the network topology I'm going to use for this demonstration. I have an inside host called as PC-1 that connects to a router. The router connects to two ASA firewalls on their inside interface, which is GE0, uh, with a switch in between them. And the ASA firewalls also connect to an outside host called as PC-2 on their outside interface which is GE3. This switch in the middle it is used to replicate the information the failover information between both the firewalls. GE1 is the regular failover interface and GE2 is the stateful failover interface. Okay so let's get started. Uh, on the router I have absolutely uh, no configuration I just have the IP addresses assigned onto the interfaces and I have a static route configured for the 172.16.0.0 subnet which is the outside subnet you can see that here the outside PC is on the 172.16 slash 24 subnet so I just have a static route pointing to 192.168.1.2 which is going to be my inside interface of the firewall you can see that here 192.168.1.2 on the ASS I have um, no configuration at all you can see um, the only thing I have on the firewalls is the interfaces are administratively up that is I have a no shutdown issued on the interfaces okay uh, and I before we start configuring I want you to notice the host name on both the firewalls now this is going to be my primary firewall for the failover and the host name is third videos and uh, this is my secondary firewall uh, which has the host name of Cert videos hyphen sec um, now I want you to notice this uh, because uh, we're going to see something interesting happening with the host name once the failover is configured okay so let's get started first I'm going to configure the um, the primary firewall okay so uh, the first command is failover lan unit primary now this command essentially says that this firewall is going to be the primary firewall for the failover okay next we need to designate an interface for failover so I'm going to say failover LAN interface and I'm going to call this link as FO link you can call it whatever you want and uh, my failover link is going to be G1 that is gigabit ethernet 1 I have it marked here in the topology GE1 okay oops okay so now it's fine uh, next we need to assign an IP address to the uh, failover link so I'm going to say failover interface IP name of the interface is FO link and the IP address that I'm going to assign is 192.168.2.2 and the standby IP address is 192.168.2.3 okay so 192.168.2.2 standby 192 Oops, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'll type that again. Failover interface. Okay, IP FO link 192.168. Oops, I'm sorry, that was my num lock. Okay, one more time. Failover interface IP FO link 192.168.2.255.255.255.0. Standby 192.168.2.3 okay so that's fine now and uh, I'm going to configure a key for the failover so I'm going to say failover key set videos dot com okay and the last command to activate the failover is failover okay so that's all the configuration on the primary firewall next I'm going to hop on to the secondary firewall and uh, the configuration of the secondary firewall is going to be exactly the same as that on the primary firewall okay uh, so I'm going to say failover LAN unit secondary, okay, and then failover LAN interface um, FO link, and the same interface gig one. You can see that here, okay. Gig one is for regular failover, okay. Gig one and an IP address failover interface IP FO link. Now uh, you need to assign the IP addresses in the same order that you assign in the primary firewall. You can see that here 192.168.2.2. So I'm going to say 192.168.2.2.255.255.255.0. Standby 
192.168.2.3. Okay, and my key is going to be the same said videos.com and finally failover to activate. Okay, so it says detected an active mate and beginning configuration replication from the mate. You can see the same message here beginning configuration replication sending to me now you can say you can ignore this uh, error message that you see here I think that is a GNS message uh, we can ignore this for the moment and it says end configuration replication to mate which means the failover is properly configured now uh, now uh, we can check the failover status with the command show failover okay so it says failover on this unit is the primary and what is the failover interface so we have failover configured. Now I want you to notice something here. Uh, the host name on the primary firewall was third video, which is correct. However, on the secondary firewall, you can see the host name is also third videos. That's because uh, the configuration was replicated from the primary or the active firewall to the standby firewall. So it takes the same host name as the primary firewall. So how do we differentiate between the primary and the secondary firewall? The command uh, to do this is prompt host name priority state okay state okay so now you see set videos this is the primary firewall and this is the one that is active right now okay I'm going to say write memory to write the configuration to memory and the command to write the configuration on the standby firewall is write standby okay this command causes uh, a firewall configuration replication to happen you can see that here okay so you should be able to see the host name change on the secondary firewall as well there you go you said it says um, third videos is the host name it's a secondary firewall and it's in standby currently okay so now we can um, proceed with the interface configuration show interface IP brief okay now I'm going to configure gigabit Ethernet 0 that is my inside interface GE 0 so I'm going to configure that first interface G0 okay IP address 192.168.1.2 that is what is written here 192.168.1.2 standby 192.168.2.3 I'm sorry 1.3 the standby IP address is 1.3 okay and um, name is inside okay and I'm gonna say no shut okay now this uh, this configuration should already be replicating on the secondary firewall because we have failover configured so you should be able to see it here show interface IP brief and there you can see that okay and uh, next uh, we will quick will quickly configure the outside interface which is GE3 here okay so I'm gonna say interface gig3 IP address is 172.16.1.2 and the standby is 1.3 Okay, so I'm going to say 172.16.1.2.255.255.255.0 standby 172.16.1.3. Okay, name is going to be outside. And I'm going to say no shut. Now before we proceed any further, I just want to check out the configuration of the interface Geek Zero. Yeah, I thought so. I'm going to change the security level to 100 interface geek zero security level 100 okay so we are good to go now let's try pinging uh, let's try to ping the outside host PC2 from PC1 uh, now I'm using a virtual PC simulator to simulate both the host machines so I'm on PC1 right now and I'm gonna ping the outside host which is 172.16.1.4 okay so it doesn't work and it shouldn't be working because we don't have any routing configured on the firewall so uh, I'm gonna add a route on the firewall that says IP route and I'm gonna route uh, I'm gonna add a route for the 10 subnet which is the 10 subnet or the inside subnet so I'm gonna say 10.0.10. Dot dot dot, okay 10.1.1.0 .1 .1 .0, 255 255.255.255.0 and I'm gonna forward the traffic to this interface from the ASA I'm going to forward it to this interface okay 192.168.1.1 okay I'm sorry it, it is only route route inside okay cool so let's try to ping once again ping 
and it doesn't work. Uh, that's because we do not have an access list configured on the firewall. Show run access list. So let's quickly configure a couple of access lists, one for the inside and one for the outside interface. Access list, I'm going to call it inside in, permit, permit, IP, any, any. And access hyphen list, outside in, permit, IP, any, any. Okay, and let's attach this to the interfaces. Access group inside in, inbound on the inside interface, in interface inside. Okay, and access hyphen group outside in, inbound on the outside interface. Okay, now let's try to ping the outside host. Okay, there you can see it is working fine now. So that's uh, that's how we configure uh, failover on a Cisco ASA firewall. Now, lastly, before we uh, before I finish the video, I want to show you how to configure stateful failover. Okay, uh, the command for stateful failover is failover link, and uh, I'm going to call the stateful failover link as SF link, and the interface for stateful failover is GE2. GE2 is the stateful failover interface. So I'm going to say G2, okay? And I'm going to assign an IP address, failover interface, IP, SF link. The IP address for the stateful failover is 192.168.3.2, and the standby is 3.3, okay? So 192.168.3.2, standby, 192.168.3.3. Okay, I forgot the subnet mask. 255.255.255.0. Okay, uh, so this this uh, this should activate the sta stateful failover configuration. You don't need to do this on the um, secondary or the standby firewall because we already have failover configured. So I'm going to just say write standby. Okay, and now we can check the stateful failover configuration or status show failover. And now you can see the stateful failover is activated. You can see the statistics here, not much happening here though. So stateful failover is configured. And the last command I want to talk about is failover replication HTTP. Now this command is used if you want to replicate your HTTP sessions between both the firewalls. Okay, so that's how you configure active standby failover on a Cisco ASA firewall. Thank you for watching.